Hey there, in this video we are going to look at dividing decimals and how we do that um, when there's decimals in the divisor or in the dividend or both. So overall, the first thing we want to remind ourselves is that when we have division, we can set up long division and the number inside is going to be your dividend. And the number outside is going to be your divisor. And then what we end up with as our answer is going to be our quotient. Now, sometimes that's written as a fraction. So the dividend would be on top and the divisor would be on the bottom. And again, what we get, our quotient is going to be our answer. So that's two ways we can look at a dividend, a divisor and a quotient. So with that in mind, if the divisor has decimal digits, so that would be the bottom number or what we're dividing by, then we want to count the number of decimal places and delete or ignore the decimal point, and then move the decimal point of the dividend to the right the same number of steps as the number of decimal digits the divisor had. So let me show you what I mean by that down on example one. So 0 0.444 divided by 0 0.2. Our divisor is this 0 0.2. So we always want to get rid of our decimal point in the divisor before we worry about anything else. So if I count how many times I would need to move this over to make it a whole number, or in other words, how many decimal digits there are, that would be one decimal digit in this divisor. So I need to move the decimal point over one spot to the right, always to the right, in our dividend. So that's going to give us a new problem 4.44 divided by 0, 2, or just 2. Now, once we have a divisor that does not have decimal digits, it's okay to have a dividend with decimal digits. We will just go ahead and divide. And when we set up our long division with 4.44 underneath and 2 out here, if you choose to go this route, um, as opposed to doing it in your head, then we will just leave the decimal point in the exact same location as where it was in the in the divi in the dividend in our quotient. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do that with our long division. With long division, you would look at two going into the first digit, which is four. Two goes into four two times. Two times two is four. We would subtract down those columns. That would give us zero. And then two doesn't go into zero, so we do need to bring that next number down, that four down. Two goes into four two times, so we put a two next. And then two times two is four. Again, we end up with zero. And then we can bring down that next four. Two goes into four two times. Two times two is four. And this time we get zero. There would technically be a zero here, but if I bring zero down, it doesn't work. Our remainder is zero. We are finished. We've gone through all of our numbers up top, and we have um, gotten zero as our remainder. So 2.22 would be our answer. And again, our decimal point is in the same location in our quotient as it was in our dividend. So our answer is 2.22 on this example. So let's take a look at number two. It's a similar problem. So we have um, decimal digits in both the uh, top and the bottom, if I thought of this as a fraction, or both in the dividend and the divisor. So our divisor is 0 0.6. So I want to go ahead and move that one decimal point over to the right to make this just a 6. And if I do that here, then I need to do the same thing over here. So that's going to be 11 divided by 6, which will get me the same result as if I were to um, do 1.1 divided by 0.6. Okay, so once I get rid of that um, decimal point in the divisor, whether or not the uh, dividend has a decimal point as well does not really matter. So 11 is not divisible by 6, so I am going to go ahead and do this as long division. So I'll put 11 here and then I'll divide it by six. Six does not go into the first number, which is one on its own. So you can put a zero there as a placeholder or you can leave it blank. Six, now we look at the two first two numbers, which is 11. Six does go into 11 one time. So we put one up here. One times six is six. And then we subtract 11 minus six is five. Now six does not go into five. So we need to go ahead and put a decimal point just like we practiced previously and put a zero after that. So we'll bring that zero down. Six does go into 50 and it will go into 58 times. So we will put an eight here. 
So 8 times 6 is 48. And we subtract 50 minus 48 is 2. Notice 6 does not go into 2. So we need to put another 0 there and bring that 0 down. So now we are looking at 20. Now 6 does go into 20. 6 goes into 23 times. 3 times 6 is 18. We subtract 20 minus 18 gives us 2. Again, 6 doesn't go into 2. We do have to keep doing this because we haven't hit a remainder of 0 yet after finishing using all the numbers up here in our dividend. So we'll continue by putting another 0 there, extend this line a little bit, and bringing that 0 down, and we have 20 again. 6 again does go into 20 three times. 3 times 6 is 18. Subtract and you get 2. So we'll have to put another 0 there bring it down and we get 20 again. When we do that, we get um, three, three times six is 18, subtract and we get two. And you'll notice that this pattern is going to continue forever. So once we see it repeating three times, we can go ahead and stop and see, okay, this is not going to stop. So we can bring that decimal point up to the same location it is in our quotient as it was our dividend. And so our answer is going to be 1.83 with the three repeating. Notice only the three is repeating. So I only put that bar over the three, not over the eight as well. And that will be your final answer number two. So in summary, we always wanna deal with our decimal point in the divisor before we worry about a decimal point in the dividend. And then once we do that, um, by moving the decimal point however many times we need to based on the number of decimal digits in the bottom, then we go ahead and just divide like normal. If there's a decimal in the dividend, remember that when you set up your long division, whatever number is down here, that decimal point is going to go in the exact same location in the quotient in our answer, okay? If we see, repetition at least three times like we saw on that last one, then we want to go ahead and stop there and use um, one of our notations to indicate that the number is repeating. So for example, we used 1.83 with the bar over the top of the three to indicate that this is really 1.8333 three, 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 and the three goes on forever. All right.